I want to say thank you for tuning in to this message. Uh, we are grateful uh, that you are here with us this morning and uh, pray that the message uh, reaches you where you are. Uh, we know that there's a lot of people tuning in from all over the state of Texas and really all over the country and all over the world. And our prayer is, is that you feel the presence of the Lord during this message and you leave changed. Uh, anytime that you encounter Jesus in the Holy Spirit, you're going to have something happen. And that's what we're excited about, uh, is you being able to uh, connect with the Lord through the message today. We're so thankful that you're with us. Uh, now, enjoy the message. This helped me kick off where we're at today, the new series called Exposed. And today, if you're making notes, we're going to talk about vision and dreams. We're going to be in Genesis 37, 1 through 11, and we're going to go back into the life of Jacob, known as Israel. Pastor Saul preached a message about drift and about Shechem, and it was a remarkable message. It moved me. It moved me. It's continually moving me through the week. The message to the men and really to the church, we need to be where we should be. But oftentimes we find ourselves in a place that we shouldn't be. This carries on this morning. Everyone in here has had a dream or a vision, thing that you would like to do, things that the Lord has put on your heart. We're going to find that in a story this morning. If you will, just read with me this morning in uh, Genesis 37, 1. And... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go backwards. I'm going to read, and then I'm going to move back. I just, I just, the Lord just kind of moved me. Um, let's go. Joseph's dreams of greatness. Let's read this. Now, Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. This is the story of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah, and the sons of Zilphath, his father's wives, and Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now Israel, which is Jacob, loved Joseph more than all of his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a tunic of many colors. This kind of reminds me, if we could have started with the grandkids first, that's where we would have started. But anyway, the man of old age. It's really the kids don't change, we change. But when his brothers saw their father loved him more than his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now Joseph had a dream and he told it to his brothers and they hated him even more. So he said to them, please hear this dream which I have dreamed. There, were, there we were binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf rose and stood upright, and indeed your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheave. And his brothers said to him, shall you indeed reign over us, or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time the sun, the moon, which represents the church, but Jacob and Rachel and the 11 stars, his, his family, bowed down to me. This represents Israel and the church of God also. So he told it to his father and his brothers and his father rebuked him and said to him, what is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him but his father kept the matter in mind. I love what Joseph is teaching here. Joseph did not drift from the vision and the dream that he knew that the Lord had given him. It caused me to think in this way. Now I'm exposing myself to the Lord and to my own thoughts. And the question for me and the question I would ask for you is this. Am I living the dream and vision that God has for my life? Am I living it? 
Or are you finding yourself in a place where you feel like you're in the stream and you're just being carried down it? Well, that's great at the Guadalupe. Take a four-hour float, turn it into an eight-hour float if there's no stream. My old pastor used to say, any dead fish can float downstream. It takes a live fish to swim against the current. Are you swimming against the cultural current of a dream or a vision that the Lord has put in you? What is God's vision for my life and for years? What is it for my marriage? What is it for my kids? What is it for the education of my kids and myself, my career, my finances, my relationships and my faith? What does the Lord have planned for me? What does he have planned for you? You know, it's interesting. Uh, people show up in church just like I did for so many years, and I'm, I'm late to the game, as many of you know. I wasn't saved until 33. I really didn't start going to church actively until I was in my early 40s, which was just a few years ago. He said, my jokes aren't funny. What, I learned, what I'm learning is it's how you finish. It's not how you start. And he'll take you to places you never thought that you would be. We see the same here with Joseph. But getting back to the, the float, when you have a vision and a dream and you care about it and you have life in it, you're going to run to it. Many of you in here, your dreams and your visions have been stolen from you. And when you leave here this morning, I hope to you leave encouraged, uplifted, I love this scripture. It's one of the most popular scriptures around, and it is for this reason. Again, we're talking about what dream and vision does the Lord, what does he put in us? It says in 29, 11, and 12 of Jeremiah, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, and I'm going to bet you that those thoughts are way better than the thoughts that you think about yourself. I'm gonna guarantee it. Says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will. He listens to you. He listens to you. And the Bible is full of dreams and visions. And that's what we're going to do today is we're going to dare to dream again. And we're going, our focus is going, expose your, the vision and dream in you. I don't know what it is, but you should. And if you don't, that you would lean into it and make a plan to figure it out and that you'd be encouraged to chase your dream. I love Joseph. He dared to dream and he continued in it. Even after being sold into slavery by his family, the Lord had spoken to him and said, you're going to reign over him. He never backed up, even being sold. Can you imagine how you would react if your family sold you into slavery? Do you, would you have the grace and mercy to handle it? When you got to a place and they came before you and you had what you could, you could whatever your word was is what would happen. That's why I'm not God. I, if I was, man, I'd have lightning bolts all stacked up back here. What? Cut me off. You know, I mean, it's just, you start zapping people. That's the flesh. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, right? So again, I want you to, to just do this with me just for a moment. I want you to close your eyes just for a moment. I want you to think about dreams and visions. I want you to think about what dream that you had, what vision that you've had. Maybe it's when you're little, I want to be a fireman or an astronaut or a doctor. Maybe it's something in the ministry that you wanted to do and now you sense that that's just too late. Lord, what, what are you showing to us right now? What is your dream, your vision? What kind of mom or dad or grandparent do I want to be? Sister, brother, Christ follower. God, we ask you would speak, Holy Spirit, that you would move. We would sense your presence here. 
to hear the truth from you this morning. Lord, where have you spoken to us in our faith? Where are you speaking to those who are married in our marriage right now? God, we pray for our kids and our grandkids. What do you speak? What is the dreams? What's the visions for them? For our finances, what is it? What is it for our relationships, friends, family, with you? Our integrity, our character. God, what is that that you've put in us? Are we compromised in those ways? Our godliness, is that compromised? Are we spiritually unhealthy? Are we emotionally unhealthy? Lord, this morning, I pray as we leave this place, as we listen to your word today, as we sing praise to you today, that you would make a fresh deposit and the things that are in the way, the dream stealers and killers, would be exposed to your truth. We love you, Lord. We praise you in Jesus' name. First thing I want to say to you, there's nine. If I'm going to take off now. I'm going to run. I'm too young. There is no nothing. There's n- Now's not the time. I'm too young to know and to have a dream. Joseph, 17. David was in the 17 and 19-year-old. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were teenagers. The young boy that when it was time to feed the 5,000, you're never too young for God to use you. There's no junior Holy Spirit. There may be the spiritual leader in your household should be the, the, the husband, the father, but it may end up being the child. My wife was our spiritual head, which I didn't know what that even meant for many years and to help draw me to Christ. We have a lot of children that show up here, young adults, and their parents drop them off and we never really get to know their parents. Those are going to be the future leaders in our households. I'm too old. I'm wore out. What is God going to do with me? Man, I'm going to tell you, if I had that sense and feeling, I wouldn't be here before you today. I started pastoring the first church, this church, and as my, in my mid-50s. We'll be here seven years this week. We started with about 50 people that kind of liked each other. There's a tough time. And without those people sticking with this church, this would not be happening here. We owe everything to God and the people who stuck here through the difficult times so that times can be standing room only to hear from the Lord. There was a man here. It's so interesting, the timing of the Lord. He was here first service yesterday, this morning. Okay, hang on. And when I sensed, Kim and I sensed a call to come here, this was a church that we were ministering to doing marriage ministry. And out of all of my friends, other than my wife and my mother, we're all encouragers, not like my wife and my mom and this man, Terry Thompson. Here's what he said. Oh, you need to hear from the Lord. It doesn't matter what anyone else says. You, you lean into this. Yeah, you're older. Yeah, you've never done that. You don't really have the stuff that you need, possibly. But if God says it, then you can do it. See, I haven't just read about this stuff. I've actually, Kim and I have lived it. We go from a comfortable career traveling all over the world to coming and serving at a church. Was not on our radar, nowhere. But the Lord started putting dreams and visions in. And the elders were like, we don't have enough people. We need to cancel a service. I said, let's just hang on. Let's just see what happens. I had no idea the Lord just was showing things to me. Seven years. It's remarkable everything that's been achieved because of the Lord. I'm too old. Man, if that's you, 
Abraham was 100, Sarah was 90. Look at Moses' ministry. Three, I'm too much of a failure. I can't believe the building, was, you know, is, it must have good steel in it because it didn't fall in on me. I'm a horrible person. You can't believe what I've done. I was that same, I had those same exact thoughts. I felt like I didn't deserve to be in church as bad of the thoughts and the things that I've been through in my life. And, and the Lord will use you. Look at King David in his life. A guy after God's own heart. God used him in a, a, a remarkable way. I'm too new to God. I just got saved. How in the world could God use me? There's nothing more encouraging than being around a new Christian because they don't have all the churchy religious stuff all draped around their neck like a garlic necklace where a lot of the old saints, man, they like they've been baptized in pickle juice. They're just sour. I mean, who would want to be in a room with them for very long? Well, you're not supposed to clap in church. You're not supposed to raise your hand. You're not supposed to have fun. You're not supposed to enjoy yourself. Well, if we can't enjoy ourselves, of all people who are set free, who in the world should be celebrating? I mean, my goodness. <laughs> I'm too new. Man, you're the one we need to send in to just be John the Baptist and just go nuts and get out and tell people how great Jesus is. Go to work, man, go to work, go to work, yes. Mm, I'm too insignificant. Why in the world would the Lord use me? I can't read very well, I can't write very well. I, I, I'm just, I can't remember the scriptures, but yet I can remember them old disco words and the songs to old rock, 70s rock, but I can't remember scripture. How can he use me? Oh, he can use you, all right. Can he use you? I'm too encumbered by problems. This is, this is an interesting one. I know that when, and just bear with me for a second, I know that when Kim and I, when we struggle, when we have uh, discussions, <laughs> when we argue, when we do things or say things we shouldn't do, I am no good to anybody. I don't sleep well. I wake up miserable because I go to bed angry, sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. He says, it's okay to be angry, but don't, be, don't sin. Don't allow the enemy a foothold. And when you're hurting, and many of us have been in that place where we're hurting, and all we can think about is getting well, it's hard for us to minister to others because all we're doing is really taking the air out of the room in our own pain and our own grief. What I, what I suggest is that we would go and serve somebody because you should be ministering out of your overflow and not off of an empty tank. Hurting people hurt people. Get well, allow the Lord to use you. And one of the things where you can see someone getting better from a hurt is they're starting to serve others. They're starting to have a positive attitude versus a negative attitude. The Lord says, I came so you'd have life and have it more abundant. Is that life you living that life? Number eight, we're getting close now. I am too hurt by others. Anyone been hurt by their church? My hand's not an illustration. I've, I've been hurt and I've probably hurt people too. Not by intention, but when you rub up against people long enough, it's what we do. It's just, it's just time. We have people come to church and it's so wonderful they come and go, wow, man, you know, I was hurt at church. I hadn't been in church in four or five years. I was a worship leader. I was a pastor or I was this or I was that or I was heavily in Bible study. What happened is a hurt, the enemy took the hurt and stole the ministry, robbed them. And you know what else he robbed? Their dream and their vision. When a man did it, the Lord doesn't do it. We can't put men and women on a pedestal where God can be because they're gonna fail you every time. And the church said, amen. This is good, I'm telling you, this is good. The last one, I'm too not where I thought I would be. I don't know the scripture. I still have a beer in the backyard every once in a while. There's times I've drank too much. I'm not talking about me, but that's still true early on. I mean, what can God do with me? 
I mean, I should know more. I should know more songs instead of the whole library of George Strait, word for word, or wherever. I should know scripture. You don't think God can't use you? These are all lies from the enemy. We're talking about exposing yourself to the lies of the enemy and exposing yourself to God's dreams and visions for you. Helen Keller said this, and we're going to, we're, we're about done. The most pathetic person in the world, man, hang on to this, is someone who has sight and no vision. Restore your vision, your dream. Put a date on it. Put today's date on it if you need to. Date it. Whatever your goal is, whatever you want to have happen in the, the work that you have in the kingdom in this world, put a date on it. Detail your dream. I want to grow in my faith. I want to be the best mom or best grandparent or best dad. I want to be a true friend. I want to be a true friend of Christ. Maybe it's because you need, maybe you need to get saved. Maybe you need to go to a get connected class or be water baptized. And some of you may have been forced into being sprinkled as a baby and you really didn't even receive Christ yet. Maybe you need to receive them and be uh, baptized. I, I don't know what it is for you. Maybe it's to be sign up to, to, you know, you're a teacher. Maybe you are a teacher. Maybe you teach in a corporate world. Maybe you should be teaching in the Bible in the kingdom in that world. Maybe you're an accountant. Well, we, we have money. People need to account for it. Maybe you're a visionary. Maybe you're a dreamer. All of these things are really built for the kingdom, but we're benefiting in the secular world from the dreams and the visions that the Lord has put in you. If you're good at it in the secular world, there's a job for you in the kingdom. Musician, doesn't matter. There's places for you. And put a deadline on it. Date it, detail it, deadline it. So I'm going to go backwards now just real quick. Exposed means liable, open, prone. These are the synonyms. Sensitive, subject to, susceptible. Many of those words when you say exposed have a, have a negative connotation. We want to be in the light not in the darkness. Wherever you have your secret is where the enemy will come to you and steal from you. Now then, we've also learned here with Joseph, who you share with is pretty important. So let's look at this word as we close. Liable to be responsible to him. Open to his leading and direction. Prone to follow him and follow his commands out of love. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit subject to him and his ways, and susceptible to believe that his promises are true and that he is for you, not against you. We also see here, Joseph cared about his dream. He shared it and he declared it. I'll tell you something, when you, things leave your mouth, it's amazing the power of the tongue is life and death. Well, that's weird, Robert. Use my mouth. What if people are around? So what? What if they are? Would that not be an encouragement to someone that you say, I've got a dream that I almost allowed the enemy to steal, but I'm now working towards that goal now. I want to say thank you for um, being a part of today's message. We are grateful uh, for you, our church family, community online. Um, it's an interesting way of doing church, and our hope and prayer would be at some point we could get to hug you, shake your hand, see you in person. Uh, that'd be a wonderful thing. And know that no matter where you're at, uh, we love you, we care for you, and the most important thing is, is that the Lord is there. His presence is there. And if you felt the presence of the Lord uh, during today's message, we would love to hear from you. Uh, there's some contact information on the screen, uh, whether it be a prayer request that you have now or uh, a praise report or you want to talk about salvation. Uh, either way, 
we're here and standing by for you. Again, we love you. We thank you for tuning in today. Take care.